Isn't a doctor's strike, is it fair or is it disproportionate? Are we ready for a five-day strike by doctors? Theresa May saying that Brexit means Brexit and we'll have to involve a curb on immigration. What do you say? Black Child Promotions, Brother Solomon arrested in Brixton. Is that fair? Heavy-handed tactics by the police? What do you say? Nottingham Gate Carnival, is it time to move on to another venue? And finally, Trump, Donald Trump says he's going to build a wall. And guess what? He went to Mexico. Black people say we don't want him. But guess what? He went to the church. Joining us today, we have Lee Jasper, who's a community activist, who is going to talk with us and share his insight on the big news of this week. Yes. Brixton. Yes. You know, I was thinking about it, and I think that Solomon is all the public apology, I think, from the police, yes. given he was released without charge. Mm -hmm. I think the police should make a substantive donation to yes. his black child promotion. Promotions. Yes. I think the Evening Standard, whose first article suggested that the three brothers had attacked police officers, and assaulted them. I assaulted saw them. Yeah. I saw your letter as well. Yeah. Absolutely. That I think the Evening Standard. Uh, through their dis dispossessed fund, mm -hmm. should make a big donation to child, uh, black child promotions. Yes. Uh, and if you go on my Facebook page, yes. on my Twitter, you can see the letter that I publicly uh, put out saying that he should receive compensation, he should receive apology, yes. and both the police and the Evening Standard should make a big donation to his charity. I, I completely agree with that. And I've watched the, um, the video clips and very concerned about it myself because the camera doesn't lie. And um, you saw it clearly exactly what I'm hoping we can get a yeah. film. You, you say we can get a film of it. Yeah, yeah. But no problem. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, I completely agree. And there's a GoFundMe, which he has, but a Solomon has. Yeah. And apparently it has passed the target now. Absolutely. So therefore, um, not saying that we want negative things to happen to make good things happen, but we've got to capitalize on this opportunity at the same time. to, to keep, Every cloud. Yeah, to actually hold the police accountable at all costs. And it was very interesting to me that uh, people were able to demonstrate right in front of the police station, on the steps of the police. How did that happen? Well, a young sister called Nikisha, who's uh, an ardent Pan-African, Pan yeah. called the demonstration. Yes. And, and we all turned up. I was there, there was lots of other people there from uh, communities, his family is, 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 was there. People who'd grown up with him from a boy, yeah. who'd known him uh, uh, from a, a childhood were there and we were able to put a very robust demonstration outside yes. Brixton police station yes. and lo and behold as we were there he was released without charge. At the same time? At the okay. same time. Well. So what it shows is that you can have community intervention yes. that if it's orderly, if it's disciplined, if it's well organized can have the effect and uh, we're yes. all proud of uh, being able to be involved in that release. And there was a good lawyer which was there. Uh, Jeffrey Mohammed. Jeffrey Mohammed. I know the from, Nation of Islam. Yeah, I know from here is when I was training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we just want to say to the Nation of Islam that had their solicitor not been there, yes. had he not intervened, then uh, Solomon may well still be in custody today. So we've got a great respect to uh, Minister Hillary Mohammed and the Nation of Islam and Jeffrey for his uh, legal skills. using the Brexit saying Nigel Farage, the leader of the Brexit program, which of course is not the case, but that is a perception. And it's also fueling something in America as well, with the racial element rising. My view is that yeah. uh, uh, what we've seen right across the world is yeah. an increase in ideological austerity. Mm. And where that takes place, uh, requiring it, it does huge cuts to public sector budgets. Yes. Yeah. It also requires scapegoats. So whether it's in America, whether it's in Europe, whether it's in Britain, yes. we find ideological uh, austerity and economics requires people to be identified yes. as the problem uh, for our economy. Yes. So whether that's Poles here, whether it's Mexicans in America. And globally, we're seeing this drift to the right, yes. which increasingly scapegoats vulnerable and minority communities. Yes. And it's increasingly exploited uh, by politicians like Trump and Farage. Mm. I mean, Trump is almost Custer's last stand in America. Yeah. I mean, the figures don't suggest unless he can uh, uh, register millions of disaffected uh, white uh, uh, Republicans mm. onto the vote roll, doesn't suggest he can win. But there's a sort of deep melancholia of uh, middle-class uh, uh, people right throughout yeah. the world mm -hmm. suffering under austerity 
who are hankering back for glorious economic times yes. and are pointing the finger at Mexicans or Poles mm. or Muslims or, 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 or any immigrants yeah. as being the reason why they are now not enjoying the fruits of their economic success. It's a lie, yeah. it's a scandal, and it's literally costing people's lives. But going back to Brexit now, where Brexit is at, because nothing has really happened yet, but the, the signs and the ripple effect is all over. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the cabinet sat down together and said, Brexit is Brexit. We're talking about the pound rebounding. Um, is there any positive that one can see from the vote of the referendum? Is it that people power has actually spoken? Well, I think the economy, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the judge is out, if you like, the jury is out on whether the economy will still survive. We've still got a long way to go. Yes. And there are still substantive economic weaknesses in our manufacturing sector as opposed to our service sector. Yeah. So there are still some fundamental structural weaknesses in the economy yeah. that will have to be ironed out. Whether we'll be able to do that, we will have to wait and see. Yeah. What I think is that whatever happens, whether the economy goes up or down, mm -hmm. uh, the extent to which black people, ethnic minorities in the United Kingdom and in Europe can expect to live a, a, a life free of discrimination mm -hmm. I think yeah. it will be deeply affected by this. Yeah. I think Brexit means increased racism. Mm -hmm. I think it means increased racial inequality. If you saw the Equality and Human Rights Commission report published two yeah. weeks ago, yeah. uh, the chair made a very specific uh, uh, statement. He was appointed, he's a government appointee yeah. to that position. So this is hardly somebody who's from the radical left. Yeah. Yeah. His statement was that racial inequality and the growth of those inequalities are increasing tensions in Britain. I think our children and our grandchildren are probably going to see a kind of racism, a kind of European continental style racism, such as Le Pen and, and, and Wilders in Europe being imported here to the United Kingdom. And, and, and whereby they cut against human rights, yeah, cut absolutely. against all these different um, laws which is established. Well, you saw that we're now getting a Bill of Rights. Well, well, exactly. But now I want to tap into black child promotions um, um, where we had... Can I just say on Bill of Rights? No, I was going to come into that with that. Yeah, right. Keep talking, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that the issue is very yeah. fundamentally important. Yeah. If we're repatriating uh, uh, human rights, mm. the European Convention of Human Rights in the United Kingdom, mm. uh, then we're going to have to look again at our race uh, equality. <laughs> Yeah. I'm fearing, and lots of people are fearing, that what we'll see is a dilution of present mm. levels of anti-discriminatory legislative protection because our government is committed uh, or thinks that the issue of racism in society is one uh, that has largely been solved. Yeah. And, and that is correct, and that's one reason why I was actually going to pick up on to uh, a brother Solomon. This yeah. is a gentleman who was uh, arrested in Bridgeton for actually selling or promoting black books. Yeah. But he actually held up, when I saw the video, he held up part of the Human Rights Act, an article, uh, it was article or whatever yeah. like that, was talking about that uh, it is not fair, I'm doing the right thing. So Lee, do you think what is happening at the same time, I mean, Brother Solomon is now um, free, and um, but do you think this is something which is permeating through the system? Is, are we going backwards? When our four fair parents came here to the UK and we fought with the Windrush factory and everything like that, how are we going backwards then? Well, two things. One about Brother Solomon Brother first. Solomon, yeah. yeah, Brother Solomon uh, is a well-known activist in the community. Yeah. He actually gives books away. You make yeah. a donation, he gives away books. Yeah. All of his books are designed for education of black children. Mm. And so here is a young man uh, with his team who are going around London providing free books, yeah. taking donations under the, under the auspices of his charity, which is a registered charity finds himself subject to arrest by 20 police officers. Mm. Frog March carried. I don't know whether you've seen the video, I saw but the, the video, video is worth seeing if people yes. haven't seen it. But he's literally swept away by a swathe of 20 police officers. Mm. Now this is somebody who's on our streets trying to provide education and nourishment mm. to young minds. He's not somebody selling drugs, he's not yeah. somebody doing anything illegal, mm. subject to some harsh treatment. And yeah. I think that what you find is since we've had the Black Lives Matter movement yes. uh, in the United Kingdom, yes. that British police are becoming increasingly intolerant of anything that they see as overtly politically black. And I think yeah. Solomon was a victim of that yesterday. I find that very interesting, the fact that after America, that Britain is somehow becoming a bit harsher. I thought that they would have been a bit more mellow in light of the fact that the, 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 the increase of atrocities against black persons in America, but somehow, 
they're becoming more, more intolerant. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think that two things. I yes. think that, yes, in, the, in Britain, uh, you know, uh, being fifth generation Britain now, we, see, we saw off the very crude and violent racism mm. that we used to see in our streets in the 60s and 70s. Yes. Even in the 90s, you remember that Stephen Lawrence died in 92? That yes. was a mini recession. So recessions, we know, increases hate crime on our mm. streets. Uh, and what we've seen is over this period, we've seen a growth in racial inequality. Yeah. We've seen over that period a decrease in racial hostility yeah. up until the Brexit moment. Yeah. And so actually we've got less social mobility in our community today than our parents had when they arrived there in the Windrush. Yeah. That is the effect. So if we have 55% black youth unemployment yes. on average across the United Kingdom, with pockets in Tottenham and Handsworth mm. and Brixton and Moss Side going up to 75 and 85 mm. percent. Those are comparable with youth unemployment rates mm. in Greece, in Spain. In fact, the unemployment rate of the West Bank Gaza mm. is 45 percent. Mm. And we are 55 percent in a disposably, in quotes, developed economy yeah. and modern democracy. How so we've got, yeah. we've got an economic crisis in our own community yes. of the scale of the European Eurozone crisis yes. right here in the United Kingdom. So are things yeah. getting better or worse? They're getting worse, immeasurably worse. How do we fix it? Well, we vote out a Tory government. That's the first thing that we have yeah. to do in order to fix this. Because ideological austerity uh, uh, only serves to make the rich richer and the poor poorer. So is Corbyn the answer? Well, a Labour Party is the answer. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Corbyn's going through his leadership yeah. uh, struggle at the moment. Yeah. I'm hoping that he will succeed. Because I think Jeremy Corbyn brings an authenticity yeah. uh, to politics that, frankly, modern-day politicians don't have. And there's a desperate need to restore faith in modern democracy. Yeah. A politician should be a man or a woman of his or her word. Mm. But Jeremy Corbyn, despite what the Westminster media bubble will say about him, commands massive and in-depth support around the country. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard that for yourself, straight from Lee Jasper's mouth. Um, Corbyn is the answer. <laughs> Labour is the answer. That's a question, whether you believe it or not. What is the answer? We're just putting that views out there. But mm. I want to come back to Trump. Yeah. Right? Before I touch on to Notting Hill Gate. Donald Trump did something. He he said, I'm gonna build a big wall. Yeah? Yeah. And then he says, I want to go into the black community. Yeah. The black community say, no, we don't want to. Yeah. Mexico is and guess what he did? He went into Mexico. Yeah. Next thing he did, he went into the black community. And, and what he's saying is that, what difference does it make? Do you think Trump is pandering or just taking people for a joke? Or do you think he's a person that will go in there and fix it? I'm well, just putting that out there. Well, look, we are, we've had 35% black youth unemployment mm. prior to 2008. Mm. We have 55% now. Yeah. You do the maths, mm. right? The reality is, is that ideological right-wing economics mm are placing a crushing weight on the most poorest sections of our society. Mm -hmm. That is evidenced by all uh, economic analysis. Yeah. And so when you hear the sort of shrill politics of Trump or Farage, mm -hmm. these are distraction tactics in order to confuse a uh, wider community who are desperate for greater economic uh, times and good fortune, mm -hmm. uh, but whose prejudice, prejudices are susceptible to appeal by irresponsible politicians. That's what Paul Trump says when he says he's going to build the wall. How in a 21st century global economy are you going to build a wall around Mexico? Well, he says he's going to put sensors now on the green and up the sensors for those on the ground. <laughs> I think that what you see in yeah. Trump yeah. is a very dangerous articulation. And that is, when austerity economics hits the very cautious sections of community, they move to the extreme right. You've seen that in Europe yeah. with Le Pen, who's now challenging for the French presidency. Yeah. In Denmark, Sarkozy in coming back as well. Austria, yeah. in France, you see that. And what that is, is a reaction to the economic pain that the poorest are feeling and their misplaced anger being targeted on migrants, immigrants, yeah. choose your scapegoat, right. Mexicans. Right. And this is a phenomenon that is happening across the whole world. Right. These are exactly the same conditions that led up to World War I right. uh, and the breakup of uh, uh, the global economy on the basis of imposed trade tariffs and, in, uh, and international competition uh, for trade. And look where we are now. We're now in a position yeah. where we're su suggesting, should we be have a lax tax rate to like Northern Ireland? Carnival success. Yes. They're saying it was barred by over 400 arrests. And um, the police are saying, 
we are actually getting pressure and you're seeing different articles talking about moving the carnival to Hyde Park. Me, that's like a day job. I keep hearing that every year. Well, that's not, that, well let's not uh, get to, too jumpy. I mean, yeah. in, in, in Trinidad, uh, carnival ends in a football arena. Yeah. It's a park. Yeah. You know, Sabina Park. Yeah. That's where it ends. Mm -hmm. So carnivals and parks are associated. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to consider new routes, yeah. whether the park's involved or okay. not. But this constant critique yeah. of one of the most successful cultural events yeah. in Europe mm -hmm. uh, that is a resonance of the Windrush and Caribbean communities' yes. uh, 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 migration here. Yeah. And don't forget how it started. The racist murder of Kelso Capri. Yeah. So we're getting back to the uh, uh, hate crimes again. And guys like Sam King and those founding fathers. And those father. Father, uh, mm -hmm. fathers. Oliver, Mo Oliver Morris, Olive Morris, and many others. So these are people who founded Nottingham Park. It's a fantastic cultural event. Mm -hmm. It brings huge economic success. It turns over 193 million pounds. Yes. Uh, over 50 of that is profit to the local economy, according to uh, credible economic research. Yes. And we never hear about that. Yes. And when we tot up the prime rate, mm -hmm. the prime rate this year was 0.004. Ascent, which is that is the lowest prime rate per head of any cultural festival in United Kingdom. Because we're talking 2.5 million or 2 million? 2.5 million. It's about the, the population of Jamaica. Absolutely. So well, how much prime would you have in Jamaica yeah. on a daily basis? Wow. Or in a small borough? So you cool. could expect more prime anywhere else. Yeah. 450 hours at the carnival, yeah. Helen West London. Yeah. You know, and David Musker. The, yeah. This is the commander in charge of policing said that the number of arrests had been inflated, he said this, by psychotic substances and that the revised method of recording injures the police and resulted in close attention paid to officer welfare. So therefore, is it that the, the type of crime now has sort of become a bit more different as well? Well, no, I don't think, I think you put 2.5 million people yeah. anywhere, you're going to find you're a lot more yeah. crime yeah. than you did at Nottingham Carnival. Mm -hmm. That's just the fact of the matter mm -hmm. of, of, of the thing. I don't see that there's more officer injuries, and I don't see that uh, uh, there is necessarily more crime. Mm -hmm. It's the most crime, uh, lowest crime rate of any major cultural festival mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom. And it makes a lot of money, and it brings a lot of joy and harmony, yeah. particularly at this point where yeah. communities are fighting against each yeah. other, feeling as though they everybody squeezed, the Muslim community here, the Polish yeah. community over there, black yes. community suffering. This is the event that brings them all together. It should be celebrated yes. as one of the cultural jewels in the British cultural mm -hmm. calendar. And instead, it's treated as if it's some sort of, you know, a pump parish garden fate yes. and funded accordingly. It's absolutely outrageous. So therefore, Carnival is here to stay. Absolutely. And um, there's no problem or differences in for it to go to maybe a bigger venue at the end. I think they should start in Hyde Park and finish in Notting Hill. All right. That was my preference okay. in, the, in the when I was in the mayor's office. Okay. Because you can have a televisionized start yes. in Hyde Park, lots of ribbons and cut the tape. Mm -hmm. You can attract sponsorship for that and you can sashay your way on the way to your home, right. spiritual home which is Notting Hill right. and end up where you're ending up now which is Ladbroke Road. Right. That's been all me my preferred right. solution because the crowd density in Carnival is too high. So God forbid there is any reason to stampede, yes. there would be a lot of people who are injured. So my thoughts would always have been, how do you lower crowd density, allow more people to see the spectacle that is Carnival, yes. and bring additional revenue to the event? And that's why the Heights Park solution was something that I proposed very early on. Fantastic. So ladies and gentlemen, the Carnival is here to stay with suggestions from Lee Jasper <laughs> as to ways it can develop and get bigger. And without further ado, Lee, thank you so much. Thank you. And see you next time. See you next on time. In Review.